In this video, I'm going to show you how to use vision as a sensor. So we can integrate legacy non-connected devices into our smart homes. So the first thing to do is capture some data. I'm using a standard IP camera mounted in the kitchen and we use this for various things like security or monitoring the cat food. I have this deployed as a Docker container to my home lab. And it's where I'm running multiple services, and this is one of them called Agent DVR. From here, I can easily set recordings, take screenshots, and start to build out my data set. So this view actually has multiple things of interest, but the two things I'm trying to solve for here are the locks. You've got the handle where the normal uh, mortise lock goes in, and then you have the top lock, the added security bolt. Once you've captured some data, you need to start training your vision models on it. I'm going to be using Intel Getty. Full disclosure, I'm part of the team that develops this, but you can use any other product to do this part. So I'm going to go ahead and annotate the objects of interest. So I've got my main lock there and my top lock up there. Do this a bunch of times, get your vision model trained. Um, so this is training a detection model, which is your first going to localize where those two objects are within the scene. Once you've trained your object detection model and are happy that it's detecting the objects of interest, I then use a Python script to crop out the region from the video feed and then send it to a classification project. In this example, you can see that I've got the handle and the top lock uh, as crops from the main video feed. If I double click on one of these, we can see the annotation that I've got applied. You can see that I've annotated this as unlocked. This is the keys in during the day and on AI prediction. We can have a look at the attention it is indeed around where the keys are. So once you've got your classification model trained, I've got my four classes, the keys in door and unlocked that I've marked as red, because obviously those are the warning states when the top lock is unlocked or the keys have been left in the door. If the top lock is locked, uh, it's green for good, for safe. And if there are no keys in the door, that's also a greeny color because uh, that's also a safe condition. So once you've trained your model, you can plot something like the confusion matrix. This shows what the input label should map to uh, on the predicted label. So we can see here that a key in the door label, 100% of the time maps to a prediction of key in the door. So we know that the model is not getting any of these things confused, which is good. So the next thing to do is to use these models that we've trained to do live inference on our camera feed and feed these predictions back to our home automation system. So I'm just using a Python script here and the MQTT library. Here we define the MQTT broker and the port that we wish to connect on. I define two topics, the one for the bottom lock and one for the top lock. The hierarchical structure of my topics within my home is the floor, the room, the group that it belongs to. So this is gonna be linked to my sensors. It could be linked to lights, for example. Uh, this is going to be linked to sensors and then the name of the sensor. So I'm not going to walk through every part of the code, but basically it revolves around loading the deployed models, connecting to my frame source, which is my IP camera in this instance, while the source is available and is open, read the frames, convert them to the right color format, do the inference and keep a note of where the bounding boxes are for the main lock and the top lock, crop those out from the image, then run them through the classification models. If there's a label for no keys, send one, across the uh, bottom lock topic, otherwise send a zero. And for the top lock, if it's locked, we send a one. If it's not, then we send a zero. Then the next application we can use is MQTT Explorer. So I've connected to my home broker and I can see all the devices that are being transmitted. So I can have a look at one of my servers and the sensor, and I can see the CPU temperature of one of my machines. Have a look at another one here and you can see how that's running a bit cooler. And another mini PC, and that's a bit hotter. I think I've turned the fan off that one entirely uh, to make it run silently. So I'm gonna go and have a look at zero, kitchen, sensors, and here we are. We're getting the status of the bottom lock as one and the top lock as one. And if you remember up here, uh, one corresponds to no keys. So on my home lab, where I have the agent DVR running to record on my IP cameras. I also have a number of other services such as InfluxDB, Grafana, Node-RED, 
So InfluxDB is just sat there monitoring for a topic which is uh, made up of wildcard, wildcard, sensors. So anything that broadcasts with this kind of structure gets picked up on InfluxDB. We can then use Grafana to connect to the InfluxDB database and start pulling back time series data. So this is my Grafana dashboard. And here's where we aggregate lots of sensors from around the house. My power sensor has recently died, so I don't have any data coming in for that, unfortunately. Here you can see a number of sensors around the house that monitor the temperature. So we have the floor zero garage, floor zero hall, floor one hallway, and second floor landing. So if we switch to seven days, you can see a bit more data collected over the past week. I also have a temperature probe in my planter outside so you can see how the temperatures varied externally along with the humidity both inside and outside. I also have several motion sensors dotted around the house and these are used to trigger various uh, lights automatically when you walk in and out of rooms. All those motion sensor events are also logged in Influx and then also visualized on Grafana. We can also see the boiler events so these are when the heating and hot water are demanded. So if we switch back to the last five minutes we can see that the uh, top lock is locked and the bottom lock is no keys. This little dip here is probably where uh, someone walked in front of the camera. If we go to edit, you can see the query that we're running to get this data. So if we look at the edit screen for this, I'm using the stat item in Grafana and I'm plotting the sensors with a field top lock on the floor zero and room equal to kitchen. And likewise, I've duplicated that query for the right-hand side, and I've just switched that field out to bottom lock. I've also added a transform data setting. So if I turn these off so we can have a look what it looks like from the raw feed. This is the main query, so the top lock, floor zero, room, kitchen. But if I transform that with a small regex to search for that pattern, and then we get that first variable, which is the device name. So we know it's top lock. Then just to clean it up, converts top lock and bottom lock into nicer looking text. And of course, when we're sending this data over MQTT, we're just using zero and one to flag to make it easy for Influx to digest that format. So in Grafana, we're just then showing a mapping of one to locked and zero to unlocked with the appropriate colors to show safe and warning. So you can see that bringing it all together, a few seconds after I put the keys in the lock, the model inferences to detect where the keys are, sends it to the classification model, broadcasts that over MQTT, it's picked up by InfluxDB, then the Grafana dashboard updates as you can see on my mobile phone here. The delay between changing the state of the lock and seeing the Grafana dashboard refresh is due to Grafana only updating every five seconds. Seeing as this video is already quite long, I'll skip over the node red bits, but I'll probably come onto that in a future video.